So what the map method does is it runs every element in your array uh, through a given function and then it returns whatever that return value is it adds it to a return array um, so for example let me just uh, go ahead and show you what if we had an array of numbers here and let's pretend that this array of numbers that we were getting in uh, was <clears throat> was some money and we wanted to add tax to every one of these elements so if I wrote a function here and called this add tax then I can pass in the element then I can return um, let's see I can return a dollar sign and then we can add this element times uh, let's say that we want a six percent tax so let's do 1.06 and then we'll just do a two fixed here on the end of two so that it keeps that to two decimal places and then let's uncomment out this mapped variable here and let's set this equal to array 18 dot map and we want to map this array to this add tax function and save that and output this to the HTML and now you can see that the original array here uh, all we had was an array of integers uh, 10 20 30 40 50 and now this mapped version is uh, every one of these elements run through uh, this add tax function which puts the dollar sign on and returns the uh, tax value of all of the integers that we had. So 1060, 2120, 3180, 4240, and $53. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> uh, just to show you another example here, if we have um, an array of names, then I could do a function called to upper, and then pass in the element. And I could just return the element dot to uppercase and uncomment out this var mapped and then set this equal to array 18 dot map and map this to the to upper function. Save that and let's output this to the HTML and save it. And now you can see whenever I echo out this mapped variable, it is this entire array, but all of these are now um, have two uppercase applied to them. Um, so you know, writing something like this is, uh, is a lot more readable and a lot cleaner than uh, doing a bunch of for loops and running through your array and, and doing things to every element that way. Plus you don't have to worry about these out of bounds exceptions and things like that. Um, you know, if I go in here and start adding stuff uh, to the end um, then you know it will uh, just take care of that automatically um, so yeah the uh, map function is very useful if you have a lot of data that you have coming in um, through an array and you want to do and you want to do the same thing to every element uh, in that array then the map function is definitely something that you want to check out um, so that is the map method so I thought we could take a really quick look at how to chain some of these methods together. You know, uh, there's a lot of use useful methods that we've gone over, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, they don't meet all your needs. Uh, so you can actually um, uh, chain some of these together and do some uh, pretty neat stuff. Um, so in this example, we have uh, an array of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And we have that same add tax method that we had before, but instead of returning a string, uh, we are returning, I'm going to make sure that this is a number here. Uh, we're returning a number uh, that is the um, the number times the 6% uh, sales tax. And then, so let's go ahead and look at this. I'm going to call this result 19. And let me copy that and output it to the screen. <clears throat> so... If I do what we did before, uh, taking a look at the map method, if I do array 19.map and then map that to the add tax function 
and then printed that out. You can see that this is 10.6, 21, uh, everything that we expect. It's all the numbers. Um, but now, say that each of these were individual items in a shopping cart or something like that. And now, not only did we want to add the tax, but we wanted to total all those together. Um, well, I could do a function called sum total, and I could just do the previous value, the current value, and this will be used with the reduce function. And I can return previous plus current, and then down here, I can just do dot reduce and just chain this onto the end of uh, our already the result that we already have. Then do reduce sum total, save that, and you can see we have 159. So all these added up together is 150, and plus that 6% uh, sales tax that we put on there is uh, 159 uh, result. Um, another common example you might see <clears throat> if um, uh, if you want to reverse a string in JavaScript, you can do, uh, let me just do a string here and I'll do, let me uncomment out this uh, output here. Um, so if I say, please reverse me, then this string, we can split this. Now split's not a method we looked at because that is a string, uh, that's a method for a string, uh, not the array, but we can split this. And what this does is it turns this string into an array that we can work with now. So now we have this array of characters down here called please reverse me. And now we can just do what we did before uh, with our arrays. We can call dot reverse on this and save that. And now we have the reversed version of that array. And then we can just call the join method that we looked at and join that back together. And now we have that um, this initial string here. We split that, then we reversed it, then we joined it back together, which gives us the um, original string reversed. Um, so, you know, things like that are pretty neat. Um, so, yeah, I know this uh, video was has been getting kind of long, but hopefully it was useful, useful for you guys and, uh, you know, you learned some neat stuff about JavaScript arrays and how to manipulate them. Um, you know, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, be sure to subscribe to future videos and tutorials, and thank you guys for watching.